Hello and welcome back. And that's right, today I want to continue talking about the ongoing situation right now with Samsung's firmware issue that's affecting some of their drives and how it's impacting people and new information that has appeared since that previous video. But before we go any further, a few things straight off the bat. If you watch the video that I put out, I believe on the 2nd of Feb, give or take, then congratulations, you're all caught up. But if you're not up to scratch right now, uh, there is an article uh, linked in the description, the one where we went through all of the stuff we knew so far about what was going on, Samsung's uh, response up to that point, firmware, the impact of what this uh, existing a kind of slightly shaky firmware that went out on Samsung SSDs previously and the impact of it and other platforms that had talked about this and pretty much all the information you need. So if you scroll down, you find all that information in the link below. As long as alongside that, there's also the video that we put out in question which has seen a tremendous degree of input from you guys, from a number of you highlighting your own drives that have been affected in this time, alongside other people's recommendations on how they can address this and more. So I recommend checking those out. But um, for what we're talking about in today's video, I have already pro uh, published a new article here that's uh, updating a lot more information that's come up since then. Some more information from Samsung and other platforms as well. On top of that, just before we go any further, it is worth discussing the story so far and new information. But if you already know, you're already up to date, then you can go to the time bar below and that should give you all of the chapters of the new information that are rolling out on this story that we've learnt in the last two weeks. So straight away, zoom in there. The uh, first public recognition of an issue surrounding some of these Samsung SSDs and the fact that it was a firmware update that was seemingly depreciating the health of a number of drives. This was recognized on um, Samsung's own magician tool as well as utilizing Crystal Disk Info to read the SMART or smart test results conducted from within the drive there. Uh, the earliest we could find indeed was on a Chinese forum uh, known as Chip Hell and it looked like at the beginning it was only really impacting the Samsung 980 series uh, but unfortunately that did change relatively quickly to introduce other drives there hence for this video we're going to be focusing a great deal more on the Samsung 990 Pro that came out in November last year just three or so between three and four months ago uh, on top of that uh, we talked about Puget Systems. Uh, they are a big uh, PC uh, custom uh, builder and installer uh, for a lot of people out there in the US. And they started highlighting that a lot of their consumer base had highlighted that their Samsung SSDs predominantly being used for operating system drives had started showing, showing uh, rapid decreases on reported health values based on a couple of very specific values within smart testing there. Then uh, Samsung initial, you know, kind of loudest comment we heard early doors was when uh, in conjunction with that Puget Systems um, kind of sharing of information there based on what they were hearing from their consumer base, started talking about rolling out a new firmware update. Samsung rolled out a new firmware update affecting uh, the Samsung 980 Pro drives. And this was in their January 31st update on Puget Systems there. Later on, uh, they started talking about other drives that might be affected. And although Samsung themselves weren't being especially loud about this, other platforms were. And the Samsung 990 Pro was very much in the firing line. Again, what made this sound bad was that it is a relatively new drive. And the firmware that affected the 980 Pro series was a lot older as a firmware update, which means probably a lot of 990 Pros that are even in retail now have got this older gen firmware and we still don't really know what it, the trigger is on this firmware to start depreciating that value because it's clearly not affecting everyone and the rapidity of that depreciation in health is still yet to be identified. So you're all caught up. Let's carry on with new information. So um, first and foremost, Samsung have rolled out a firmware update for the 990 Pro. That's really, really important to know before we go any further that the 990 Pro has been recognized as a drive that's being affected by this errant firmware issue and Samsung have rolled out a new firmware update. It rolled out, I believe, on the 14th or 15th of February. That'll be confirmed later in the video. But if you do have a Samsung 990 Pro and you're concerned about whether your drive has this firmware and that you might trigger this, 
Um, I will go through a few instances of how to update your firmware throughout the video, and that includes NAS users as well, but that's for later in the video. But for now, let's scroll on to some new information. Now, I mentioned earlier on about Samsung going public and talking about this firmware issue when they released their firmware update. Well, that's not completely true because they've not been tremendously loud about this they have voiced a number of their concerns and uh, kind of uh, voicing with partners that they are investigating this internally and they have ro rolled out that firmware update but i wouldn't say they have been remarkably loud about this obviously there are pros and cons to this that i want to you know cause undue panic and concern without a full investigation but still at the same time when you look at where the most potent loud examples of Samsung talking about this are, it could still be louder. One of the ones that's being highlighted a great deal is um, a Samsung support forum, uh, their EU community support forum for users manned by a number of their team members for people to come to them with their concerns. And one particular user, David B, was keen, let's translate that to English there for you, um, did highlight that Samsung are investigating this issue internally and have rolled out that firmware, at least at the time of writing that firmware post update. They were stating they were about to roll it out, which they then went on to do. And this was an official member of uh, Samsung. They're rolling it out. It must have come from an official Samsung um, you know, uh, briefing there, so Samsung's request. So again, Samsung themselves are the ones that have highlighted that there. Uh, moving forward, you can move over to Blocks and Files, which did uh, another update on this with regards to the 990 Pros. And a spokesman told them that Samsung Electronics stands behind the quality of your industry-leading SSDs, indicating the latest 990 Pro. We're aware of limited reports concerning the matter, and we're currently investigating these experiences as user configurations vary. Hence that investigation that we talked about there. Finally, there were users that were talking about how some of their uh, depreciating uh, health stats on their SSDs were starting to drop, and a lot of them starting to raise concerns with Samsung themselves. And, and one of the loudest voices that's being repeated quite a lot online is to do with uh, a chap called Robbie Khan, solid name by the way, um, over on NeoWin talking about his own experiences with the 990 Pro, that within a week of purchasing that drive, it started showing these telltale signs of depreciation of that health of his drive based on those smart stats. And this was reported from within Samsung's own magician tool, as well as reported within Crystal Disk Info reading the smart there. Now, these are all examples of, Sam uh, of Samsung kind of responding but in this case, it's kind of a mixed response because he did raise the matter, matter as you would with any drive because no um, you know, hardware is ever 100% perfect at distribution once you talk about mass production. And in this case, he raised an RMA with Samsung. And this was before it was raised a little louder over on their support forums. And it looks like he was told, if you go by the email that he received, that he was told, Samsung can't spot an issue with this drive. We're sending it back to you. If this issue still persists, we're going to need you to submit more info there. But frankly, he sent the smart test showing a failure of a drive that had less than eight terabytes of read and less than five terabytes of write there on a two TB drive. And that drive, if I remember correctly, has 0.3 to maybe 0.38 drive writes per day rating and a five-year warranty. I think that should be enough, notwithstanding these issues being recognized from within Samsung's own magician tool. And Afterwards, they did reach out to him. When he did send that information through and all of that, they did get back to him. And there was an update on the 23rd of January stating to him that they have offered to replace this SSD or they require his input to replicate the issue with that SSD. And again, as he highlights, quite why both of these options were not available prior to this point when he did raise this as an SSD um, RMA for replacement or repair is you know slightly questionable there but we're starting to see more users online such as with the reddit slash uh, the slash hardware thread here lots of users talking about this issue being hit by this issue and raising ways to recognize it as well as questioning is what we're seeing here an issue of actual drive degradation or is this just on the smart and frankly it all amounts to the same thing anyway because we trust smart figures to 
show the health of our drives and also if that smart goes to zero presumably the drive or if it goes to a low number will uh, you know act accordingly so even if it was just a numeracy error which i doubt this is still going to be a concern another concern that people have been keen to highlight is the idea that if if you have been hit by this and you roll this firmware update it does resolve it according to samsung there but at the same time it doesn't undo what's on those smart tests we've got users that have bought a drive five days ago for example with crown spike here on reddit who's installed the drive on the first did a fresh install and very very quickly his health went straight down to 97 there and again we're looking at you know around about three terabytes read write going on that drive over time and him being hit so early doors on a drive and the, even if he rolls out the firmware update is still now going to list it as 97 percent there but again until we know about the triggers of this and the extent of the issue these are all kind of awaiting a formal louder response from samsung on this which brings us back to that Puget Systems complaint there. As mentioned earlier on in the video, in the previous coverage of this ongoing issue, Puget Systems was one of the loudest voices out there when they felt the need to highlight that a number of their uh, customer base had highlighted their SSDs failing. Since that original post by them on the 2nd of February, shortly after our original video, they highlighted that despite them having tremendous confidence in the past with Samsung's SSDs and highlighting it on numerous occasions just how pleased they were with the product they started losing faith and with the 980 Pro first being affected and increased reports of the 990 Pro now they decided to replace a lot of their installation away from Samsung's range of SSDs and are phasing them out whether it is just for now or otherwise towards the Sprint Rocket series and as you can see there they were transitioning towards the 1 and 2 TB drives there in order to kind of go with a different drive until they find out more information about um, uh, Samsung's position on this the trigger for this and to know that it's been rectified and that firmware update has been purged out of the existing range of stock that's around there and again we talked about the rocket 4 plus series drives here on the channel before it's a decent enough ssd there sabrent isn't as established as samsung by any regard when it comes to sabrent and samsung samsung are a goliath company there but sabrent does have great stock levels they have done very well in the pcie gen 4 sector it should be said and when it comes to swapping out into another ssd and still not affecting their profit margin there's still a lot of reasons why you would uh, you can see why puget would make their way over to those rocket 4 plus series drives notwithstanding that they do highlight that they were already utilizing the 4 and 8 tb pci gen 4 sabrent drives there in their custom builds anyway but let's uh, that's enough talk about puget and samsung and those ssds in precise nature let's look a little bit more about other ssds because there is still the lingering question is of is this the end of the road or not now what i mean by the end of the road is that there was a time when everyone was saying it's just the 980 pro and then it became apparent that it was the 990 pro included as well and if you remember the beginning of this video i did highlight that chip hell uh, we're talking about this right the way back in September of last year about raising concerns about firmware on specific Samsung SSDs and they were highlighting several different SSDs now when this was first coming up a number of websites and a lot of community websites Reddit of course were talking about how this might be um, kind of restricted to batches out there in the east because we weren't really hearing comparative information to this here in the west and although that video that i showed you earlier on has a huge range of ssds that people have highlighted are having issues some of those issues we can't really identify based on conjecture are exactly related to this firmware issue or they are just issues or failures that have come down to just typical things that can happen in mass production as mentioned however 
there seems to be compelling um, arguments here within this. Again, all of the content and articles that I refer to in this video are linked below, along with our master article that's covering all of it together. But at the time of recording, what we're doing here on NAS Compares is we're looking at drives that are being highlighted on different platforms having potential firmware issues. So what we've done is we've put together two things here. One, we've got the details of those drives that are raised in the Chip Hell article and slowly deleting or adding drives as they seem to be falling into the frame of suspicion. Again, these are potentially affected according to those websites there and next up we've got a list of all the samsung's ssds there and if they've been affected and if they have been affected if if and when a firmware update rolls out now at the time of recording the 15th of feb we haven't got too many drives to worry about on there but if and when drives get added to there hopefully if not when we will update that list accordingly there from the master article if you don't want to read the master car article and you're already clued up anyway there'll be a link to the direct pages which will show that full list there for you to go through and the last thing i want to talk about as mentioned is that samsung have rolled out firmware updates for this again so if you're concerned that you've been affected run that magician tool to see if you've got firmware updates available to you and you're going to need a pc client there are ways and means to do it via linux and if you use that tool you'll be able to update to the latest firmware anyway as we go forward but there are some user cases where utilizing um uh, you don't have access to a pc or desktop or even a laptop system that has an m2 nvme slot now i mentioned again in those comments and in the original video that I've not really um, recognized a means to update the firmware on an M2 SSD in a docking station. Some people have highlighted that it is possible using a Thunderbolt connected Thunderbolt docking station. So a Thunderbolt docking station connected to a USB-C standard won't cut it. Some people have highlighted that a Thunderbolt dock with an M2 SSD does allow you to update the firmware in the Samsung Magician tool. But without being able to test it myself, I can't confirm that. I just know that you can't do it via standard USB docking stations. The reason that's a concern is a number of you have your M2 NVMEs installed in non-Windows or Mac systems. So, for example, some of you may have it in a PlayStation 5. The Samsung 990 and 980 can be used for PlayStation 5. Then for you users, you're going to have to get hold of a PC or a Mac system with an available M2 slot, so you can run that Samsung update tool, or at least a client tool, uh, a client system with a Thunderbolt port, and hopefully that docking station updates, something that we will test when we've got a moment. If you're a NAS user, uh, we have found guides online that allow you to use SSH to um, access a command line on your QNAP or Synology system, and update the firmware via those methodologies. But as you can see, we've not tested it yet at the time of writing that article. We're gonna run test me and Eddie. Uh, we've already got updated SSDs, unfortunately. So our SSDs here are up to date, which is really annoying for this video um, because we can't test it. But we're looking into it to see if we can run these tests for NAS systems, and then hopefully we'll do an update so you NAS guys can update the firmware on your SSDs. And if you're running a 980 or 990 Pro, or if any other SSDs come into the fold, hopefully these guides will allow you to update the firmware on those SSDs via SSH and using PuTTY. But this is our latest update on the Samsung SSD firmware failure issues at the moment. Again, the 990 Pro is in the fold. And I do think a lot of users are going to need to update that firmware because this is a relatively new drive. So check your firmware ASAP. I hope you found this video helpful. I'm really sorry. It's really, really depressing. And it's another me in the corner of the screen video. It was just the easiest way to relate all the information to you today. Thank you so much for watching. Everything's linked in the, art in the description below. Use it where you need to. And use the comments below if you have been impacted and the firmware you had if you let us know in the comments below, even if you're running alternative drives, that will potentially help other users. So let me know in the comments. But other than that, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.